everybody and welcome back to Northern Lion Plays XCOM Enemy Unknowns. We've had some weird technical issues since the last video. Apparently those first two missions, it didn't actually save. I've done some rigorous testing, we're in a new game, it has saved. The only difference is I've even named my players exactly the same thing uh, as we start our research projects here. We're going to go for Xenobiology the same way we went for the uh, Xenobiology in this other saved game. Uh, the, the only difference is that... We're one mission behind at this point, so we've just done the, like the initial tutorial mission. We've gotten very similar mission or uh, you know barracks upgrades. In any case, let's build some facilities here, exactly the same way I wanted to do the first time. So we're going to build a power generator here as we begin construction, and we are also going to build an access lift here. Excellent. Okay, so I think that's pretty much exactly where we were. All we're going to do now is go to mission control, and we should have some. Uh, alien abduction missions coming out and we're basically at the point of the second mission from the last video so everything's good we're gonna go for uh, the one that gives us the engineers which was Delhi it's gonna be moderate difficulty which I'm not happy about as you can see we still have squatty McHuge here We've got rookie Campbell who we are going to give a med kit and we're gonna give one more med kit to possibly rookie Martine who uh, I guess he is from France so it's probably not Martine it's probably rookie Martine but that is okay. So now we got two medkits on the field. I don't need to read about the effects of the medkit, please. Uh, and we should be good to go here, I think. So obviously, Squatty, Big Large, Big Large McHuge is going to be our uh, main antagonist, or main protagonist, main antagonizer here, which is a good thing, I guess, because we're antagonizing the aliens. But I'm surprised that there's a moderate difficulty mission this early on in the game. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I guess we will see. This is just our standard uh, alien, basically search and destroy mission. And we'll see how this works out. So again, I apologize for these technical difficulties. As I've mentioned in 20 or 30 videos now, moving house, basically. Uh, some things like this are going to happen. But again, the good thing about XCOM is it's not like I lost 40 hours of progress. Uh, you can just get back into the swing of things very easily. I know this map. I know this mission. Uh, I mean, obviously things change based on uh, the specific set of circumstances that you're given. However, uh, I hate the layout of like the subway trains. And having to deal with that. I'm not sure if lightning is going to have an effect on visibility, but if it does, that's going to be a pain in the ass too. But anyway, we're just going to set up our guys. Very good defensive position to start with. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is do like an easterly sweep. And we are going to um, we'll dash, send these guys dashing up and then have the other guys overwatch them. I don't know. The reason we're doing this easterly sweep is because then after we move completely to the east here, please tell me he didn't dash out into a coverless space. He's fine, okay. Um, the reason I want to do that is because then we can go north, or I guess northeast technically. I guess we're doing a westerly sweep here. Um, the, then we can go northeast through these subway trains and probably be a little bit more protected. But it all depends on where the aliens actually show up. Like where we see them pop out of. That could change our game plans here. But I'm mostly just going for these uh, weird structures that happen to be on the ground. So we're going to move Big Large McHuge up here. He is our most valuable asset, so we're going to protect him at all costs here. And once this mission is over, I believe we get the Situation Room mission, where we uh, do the escort. Not that way, you big creep. Okay, we're going to move Morrison up here, which I think is going to be the safest point for him. Nobody's going to be able to get a shot on the aliens this turn, I believe. But what we can do, at the very least, is get some people behind cover in, in half-decent positions to take shots at the enemies. Mm, that's not going to do it. Hmm. I guess we'll just put him on Overwatch for now. It's not the best position for him to be in, and we also have Martine, who we'll send over here. He might actually be able to take a crack at one of these aliens. Yeah, he's got a 45% chance to hit that one. That is worth it in my books. He's going to miss, I think. I only did two damage. Not the three that I was looking for. It's almost worse, because you hit, you wasted bullets, but you didn't actually get anything out of it. This should miss. Yeah, that's a long shot. I mean, I just hit from that angle, however. Come on. Not everybody is Sebastian Martine. Incredible sharpshooter. That's going to be a good shot there, maybe. Oh, oh, he actually got tagged. Four damage. That's pretty substantial, actually. Luckily, he's not my squatty, so I'm not super concerned. However, got 45, 45. We can at least move into a slightly better position to get this attack. Oh, man. Okay, we can still hit one. That's 45. Uh, we might as well use the pistol because it's going to have the same chance, and we don't want to waste our assault rifle ammo if it's not necessary. That's going to miss, I think. Normally, you get like a cutscene sort of type deal if you're uh, about to hit. Which is why I'm hypothesizing that these are going to be misses. So we do have a shot here on this guy. 45. You know that that is basically my bare minimum. I don't think this one's going to hit. Oh, wow. It actually did. 
the cutscene just came a little bit too late for me. Uh, now on this one, we got 45 again. We'll see how this works when we get closer. That might have been a misclick. In fact, it was a terrible misclick. Um, and we don't have a grenade on this guy. So I guess we're just going to put him behind cover. That's not what I wanted to do. But it is, I guess, sort of what I have to do. And then let's move this guy over here. And I'm a little bit worried. We could actually run and gun here. How far can we move on this run and gun? Probably not too far. Uh, just over here. And then we'll see if maybe the pistol can get close enough to, to take him out. Because the shotgun's only going to have a very small chance. As you can see, 38 right there. 50% chance. This is big. He basically holds the life of his teammate in his hands. And I think it's going to work out. Awesome. So I probably should have used a med kit on my, my teammate there. But he'll be fine. It's just a scratch. So that is two sectoids down. So first things first. Let's get this guy healed up. Luckily, he's one of the guys holding the med kit. Should have done this way earlier. He's going to get back to full health. He'll still be wounded. I wish the med kits actually worked to like assuage injury. So that way you wouldn't have to uh, go back into the med bay. Sadly, you know, if ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. That is not the way that things work. We're going to switch back to our shotgun here. Go back on Overwatch with Big Large McHuge. He is, as I mentioned, he's the only squatty in the, the squad right now. He's the only person that's gotten any promotion. So he's definitely uh, our most valuable asset right now. And we're just going to move Jeff Campbell in here. And maybe why not have him reload for now. There should only be two more sectoids here. Uh, might as well be primed and ready to go. So it looks like there's going to be two over here. Oh, maybe we just discovered them. I can't tell because I'm looking at a close-up of a leaf right now. There they go. So they're up towards the back of the level. Actually, since this is a moderate level, I guess it's possible uh, that there might actually be six sectoids instead of uh, four. Or maybe we'll come across Thin Men or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to move Morrison up here. i got to keep in mind, he's still only got his pistol out. That was very efficient movement there. Uh, we'll switch to his assault rifle. And then put him on Overwatch, because this is where we're going to want to come through next. Same thing. Campbell will maybe stick just out here. I still don't think he has a shot, a shot at the uh, enemy, so we'll just put him into Overwatch. How about Martin? Uh, we're going to just dash him over here into a fairly well-defended position. Why don't you just use the doors? Uh, and Big Large McHuge, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Just put him over here in a, a fairly well-defended position. Uh, he can see an alien, though. So we got to move a little bit more towards the uh, you know, Cardinal North direction here. He's taking a shot at Big Large McHuge. It missed, thankfully, because I couldn't see what the heck was going on in that train. And there are, indeed, two more sectoids over here. So we're going to be completely exposed uh, and out of cover. However, they might also be completely exposed and out of cover. Uh, because I guess we kind of ambushed them. They found us by accident, is a better way to put it. Now, we're going to take some of our assault rifle dudes and maybe move over here, which is a place where I'm completely unhittable from that one side. But on this other side, I can hit two guys and do 45 damage... Or, sorry, 45% chance to hit on each. That was a... Very lucky, you know, probability for me there. How about this one? We got 10% chance to hit that guy. I think that's a terrible idea. However, uh, I might use run and gun here. This could have terrible far-reaching consequences if it fails, but I feel like if I run Big Large McHuge out here, he's going to be able to use his Big Large McHuge shotgun and uh, just tear this dude's face off. 46% chance? Never tell me the odds. Thank you. It's a real Reb Brown moment right there. Uh, we do still have two guys out here. Two aliens, I should say. Guy is a term I reserve, I reserve for human males only. I'm going to take another shot here. That's going to be a miss. I mean, it makes sense considering I'm firing through that alien structure. And that... I thought that was going to be the end of this turn, but I guess not. Uh, we can move up to this one first and see if we've got a shot, but I doubt we will. Yeah, instead, I guess we'll just move up to this planter right here. And we should only have two more sectoids to deal with. That's my intention or my impression anyway so we'll see what these guys are doing they're doing a mind meld which means you know trick question i mean if we shoot the one that actually did the mind meld we'll actually end up killing both of them which is beautiful for us that should not hit eucalyptus plant will never betray me the greatest cover ever made it's probably not even real uh let us tomato cucumber i'm just dictating the things that i like on a subway sandwich here seriously these guys love vaulting uh, obviously, he's used all of his movement points. I would love to toss a grenade in here. Sadly, uh, I don't think that we're going to be able to hit the one actually doing the mind meld. It's possible, though. It might be impossible. It's hard to tell with the camera freaking out like this. Come on, you can... Okay, relax for a second. Just move up. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay, you almost got it. You might think I'm just terrible at moving the camera here. That may indeed also be part of the case. 
Can we zoom out a little bit? Maybe that'll make it easier. No, it's, I think it's because of the statue that's in the way here. You know what? We'll come back to you in a, in a little bit. That's incredibly frustrating. Uh, let's move this guy over here to a slightly better position, at least. And he might actually just have a shot at this guy, which would make my life way better if he just sinks this. He's not gonna, though. Oh, he shot at the wrong one, because I'm an idiot. Okay, understood. Uh, do we have one more guy with a shot? We do. Well, he doesn't have a shot yet, but uh, you know he's got an opportunity here. Let's move him up here. He might have a crack at one of the aliens, at least. Or, oh, he doesn't have a, a grenade. So anyway, we'll take the shot on this guy. He's gonna hit. Getting really lucky with these 45% chances so far. And then we've got one last guy. 45% chance to hit. I don't want to risk it, though. I would rather just throw this grenade into this perfect location. Maybe if I rotate the camera, it won't be so bad. It's still pretty bad. Can we just move it just a little bit here? It's because it's right at the edge of the map. There's this fucking statue in the way. I don't know. You know what? Let's shoot him. All right, that was way easier. <laughs> Forget that grenade nonsense. Okay, so he's killed six aliens. We're in the same position exactly now that we were in at the uh, conclusion of the last episode. So I think I can do one more mission here on this one. And we do have some promotions to do, which is always a fun time for me. Promoting these guys until they eventually become, you know, corpses on our memorial wall. Wow, lots of people got uh, promoted here. So big, large, big, large, McHuge. We're gonna give the aggression for the increased critical chance. Uh, Angus Morrison is now a heavy. Now, I guess he should be Big Large McHuge, not the Assault class, but anyway, he's got Fire Rocket. We'll talk about him in a sec. Uh, we've got another Supports. I guess he will be our Florence Nightingale, and we've got a Sniper. Who will be Xander Eagle Eye, because we didn't have a Sniper. Oh, maybe we did have a Sniper before, but uh, I think they were wounded in that first mission that you guys didn't actually see. So anyway, we got four Engineers. That's always a good thing. Uh, let us go to the Situation Room, where I believe we can launch a Satellite. And we're going to launch this over either Egypt or the United Kingdom. Well, this will give us plus one scientist, plus two engineers per month. This will give us plus two scientists per month, plus $100 per month. Hmm. <clears throat> we have some very interesting possibilities here. I think Egypt is going to be a better call for us, and we'll do a mission in the United Kingdom later. This is because it gets us closer to that Africa bonus that will give us all in, uh, if it doesn't already. But anyway, uh, let us now, we need to go to, right, the barracks. So we're going to view soldiers. Angus Morrison is actually a pretty solid name for a heavy already, but we gotta customize him. Uh, we're gonna give him Lump Bulkhead. I'm taking these names wholesale from a, a Mystery Science Theater episode about space mutant needs. Probably my favorite one, although Gremlins, not Gremlins, uh, Hobgoblins is really good as well. And Mitchell, of course, has a special place in my heart. So we got Jeff Campbell. He is a support, so unfortunately his name is probably not gonna suit him or his physique very well right now. But, he'll be Florence Nightingale nonetheless, so we'll confirm this. Uh, and then, I think that's good. We have two injured snipers, which is the worst. Whatever one comes out of injury first will be our, uh, our first Xander Eagle Eye. So I don't think we have anything left to do except scan for more activity. We may have another alien invasion, we may have some situation room. I can't remember uh, what comes next in our order. So that's a power generator being completed. Which is good to know, because we can actually sign a new construction here. And maybe get, uh, well I should build a satellite as well. Um, but first things first, we're going to build more facilities. We've got to build another satellite uplink. And why don't we build it right here? Oh, we can't build it. We don't have enough engineers? Really? We just did an engineer mission. Well, we'll build a workshop then. Uh, and that'll give us more engineers. Cool. If we can get this. Thank you. And we will start building a satellite, but first we need uh, more credits. So we'll go scan for more activity and see what we get. Okay, the lift is completed. Probably should have saved some money to be able to buy a satellite soon. Xenobiology is going to be complete here, so we'll assign new research, and we have a new mission. We need to research the Arc Thrower, I guess. And also build a containment facility. Oh, this is the worst, because now I don't have enough money to build a containment facility right away. Which is something I always forget, but it doesn't matter too much. We are going to do some excavation, and once the excavation is complete, then we'll talk about uh, building a containment facility. Although I also want to build a satellite uplink as soon as possible. There's lots of things on the go right now. For now, okay, Sebastian Martinez. Oh, I forgot we had an alien mission, right. Or, um, what was I going to say? A, a UFO mission. Because the order always goes, like, f four sectoids for, like, an introduction. Another alien abduction mission. Then the UFO mission. Then I think after that you do the situation room with the escort. Which is good, because that gives us uh, the opportunity to pick up a, a bunch of credits, which will be great. 
But anyway, first things first, we do have to go through this UFO type mission, which is okay. There have been, I think there's been one save file I did where I didn't shoot down the first UFO, and it's really disappointing. But anyway, we, we survived this one okay. We'll send a Sky Ranger. Obviously, we don't need to watch all those cutscenes. We've got all squaddies. That was good that all of our guys got promoted last mission. I think that means at least... That must mean that all of them got at least one kill, or at least all of them did something relevant to their class, I suppose. So we're going to have two... We're going to have heavy support squaddy. No sniper, though, right? We'll see. I should really upgrade the size of our, our squad at the officer training school, but we can't do that right away. It looks like I have a sniper, actually. Do I? Who the heck is Martin? He is a sniper. I should have uh, named him. Unfortunately, that train has sailed. So we're going to move Big Large McHuge up here. Already got uh, some alien targets. This should be... I mean, it's normally the mission where you meet Thin Men for the first time. So here's the thing. I could maybe just get lucky on this, or I could run and gun. But where am I going to run and gun to some good cover? I think maybe this over here. Too bad I can't throw a grenade afterwards, of course, but... Uh, 29 is not great, but why not take the chance? It would give us a huge benefit. Yeah, he, I mean, he is using the shotgun, so I guess it makes sense why we missed that one. I'm pretty confident that our sniper is not going to be able to see from this position. So what I'm going to do is just start moving all of our dudes out here into a position where they're going to be more likely to be able to hit the aliens, and we'll just kind of forego this turn. Uh, I'm going to put Florence Nightingale here on... I was going to say Overwatch, but if we've got a 50% chance to hit, why not just take that? Maybe we'll get lucky. Alright, two damage is something. It's not great, uh, and I would greatly prefer three. Uh, but I really want to keep my support and my sniper kind of out of harm's way here. I'm actually going to move the sniper a little bit closer. Completely nullifying what I just said. Uh, because otherwise, uh, he wouldn't be able to see the aliens to shoot the next turn. Because remember, the snipers can't move and shoot in the same turn, so I, I, can't, I don't have the same advantage that I have with a lot of these guys, where I can just move them into a good position and then shoot with a second action point. Uh, with a sniper, you've really got to plan a little bit more in advance. This alien is in a horrible position. And of course, now he's going to shoot at my sniper. You damn asshole. And now the sniper's panicked. Don't shoot my teammate, please. Oh! He's going to take a shot at the alien. That is the kind of panic that I can get behind. Uh, and of course, the fact that I didn't actually use my... or uh, use my... T -t -t Florence Nightingale here means that I can just saunter right over here, use my med kit, and heal the sniper up. He's going to be injured, so he's not going to come back for the next mission in all likelihood. However, uh, he's going to live, at least for, for the time being. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get into a great position to kill this alien, at least not with this guy. 37%. Give it a shot. It looks like he's going to succeed here, actually. Big, large, McHuge working for this promotions. I appreciate that. That's what I wanted in an XCOM squad member. So we're going to move Lump Bulkhead up here. That should be the end of this turn. Now what do we get on these first UFO missions usually? Usually we will pick up um, two sectoids. Sometimes, or uh, sorry, four sectoids. Usually uh, some Thin Men as well. And I think almost always, if not always, those beings that uh, Dr. Volan says are made out of pure energy. I believe they're called Outsiders. Uh, I think we're safe to dash Florence Nightingale up here. I've been using that smoke grenade a lot more often, too, off-camera, so I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some good uses out of that here. And Sebastian Martin, of course, uh, fresh off of his trip to the medical bay. Oh, we're going to dash him right in front of that cover. But that's okay, because there's nobody in uh, our vicinity anyway. So yeah, there could be as many as four more normal enemies and an outsider. Which might sound bad, but actually is not really all that bad, all things considered. So let's move Florence Nightingale up here. She is going to be... Oh, she's going to get first contact on this uh, outsider alien. But it's going to have a chance to move, so it'll probably get behind cover, sort of. Uh, which normally would make it more difficult to take this enemy out. Let's give it a shot. I don't know. We've been getting pretty lucky today. That's a miss, but that's alright. Our sniper might actually have a beat on that. Yeah, he does. So let's take a headshot here. 35%. Let's just take a normal shot then. Actually, let's put him into cover. I don't want him to get hurt again. Uh, and we'll have him reload on this turn. Do I have a running gun? I do have a running gun on Big Large McHuge. So I could send him kind of into harm's way. Uh, like right here. I realize this is not in cover at all. 
And we might actually come across a ton of Thin Men when we walk into this area, opening up a whole new can of worms. Uh, but 100% chance to hit is something that I cannot pass up. So we'll kill that alien pretty easily. And, oh, I see, we see more now. Uh, there's at least one sectoid over here. But where there's one sectoid, there's almost always more than one. So we're just going to put this guy back here. Uh, my expectation is that Big Large McHuge is going to take a little bit of damage this time. But after we kill these two sectoids, that should be the end of this mission. And that'll mark two fairly successful missions going on here. So let's see if they do indeed target the guy who's behind no cover whatsoever. Of course, we have a mind meld to start with. And we'll see if anything else comes out. Yeah, he's going to probably take a shot at somebody. I don't know who, but... Yeah, that would be my guess, too. Since the dude is pretty much just standing there. He might actually die if the other alien had uh, more action points. Luckily for us, he doesn't. So where's our sniper? He's all the way back here. So we're going to take this dude. Uh, wait, can our sniper see this turn? No, he can't. Okay. Well, let's think about it this way. We've got these guys. 50% chance to hit. Does up to 4 damage. Does this guy have one... Sh He's only got one target in his way. I would love to be able to, like, get up here. And maybe in getting up here, I can toss a grenade all the way back to this alien down here. But sadly, I cannot. Okay. But we're in a pretty good cover location here. Um, grenade only does three damage. So it might be in our best interest. I was thinking actually Overwatch, but I don't know. Let's take let's take a crack at the Mind Melder here. Excellent. So that's actually going to work for us. And uh, that should be the end of the mission. Excellent. So that will mark the end of this mission. And I think that's going to do it for this episode as well. And in doing so, we'll see if we have any more promotions to go, but I don't think we do. But we'll see. So with the Sky Ranger now landing, uh, we've got some Corporals for Lump Bulkhead. So we'll give him Bullet Swarm, which is... No, I don't want that. <laughs> Bullet Swarm is my favorite of this one. Also my favorite Epic Games game. Yes, I would like that. Uh, and Florence Nightingale, we'll give her the uh, covering fire, which allows reaction shots to trigger on enemy firing, not just movement. Everyone's good. And that'll do it for this episode. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Making very good progress so far, I'm very pleased. Thanks for watching.